All right, so I brought in some audio stems into the playlist. Let's now ride through the mixer and discover all the different settings on the mixer. Let's have a quick listen here. Whatever you want, jump over the fence to the other side. You can take it up, you can take it down, you can take a stroll. So right now, if you notice, none of the individual channels from the playlist are going into individual tracks on the mixer. They're going directly to the master. And this is the default behavior of FL Studio. I have not made any direct connection between any of these tracks on the playlist to the mixer and even the channel rack. If we open that up, you can see these are all the different audio tracks and they have not been assigned to the track. So I guess I could click here and drag and assign it to a particular insert on the mixer. Another way to do it will be to select the particular track over here. And then on the insert, if I right click under channel routing, I can say route selected channels to this track. Third option is to do it from the playlist. If I right click over here in the playlist, under track mode, under audio track, I can select one of these inserts. All right, so let's try this first. So now you can see here the playlist track has been renamed to insert one. And if we open up the mixer and hit play, that first track is now being routed to the first insert on the mixer. All right, now I do not want to do that. So let me undo this. Well, I guess we cannot undo that. So I'm just going to right click here under track mode and choose unassign. I've lost the labeling, so I'm just going to right click here and say auto name. And now it takes a name from the clip. Great, we're back to square one. Let's open up the channel rack. Select all these individual channels. I'm going to hold down command, click and drag. So making sure to select the first one and then command clicking. And now they're all selected. This seems to be still assigned to channel one. So let me just disconnect that. All right, now going into the mixer, I'm going to right click this first insert. And under channel routing, I could choose route selected channels to this track. But then all those individual channels will be selected to this one insert here. But that's not what I want. I want them to be placed on separate inserts. So I'll choose this option here. Shift Command L is a shortcut for that. And there we go. The tracks get routed, they get renamed, and they even get colored. That's one great thing about FL Studio. There's so many ways to just do one thing and you can choose the one that works best for you. All right, now let's explore the mixer a bit more. So we already know this left section over here is where we have the current channel and then the master. So let's say if I select this electric guitar sub, that's the current channel. It's not playing right now, so no activity over here. The master is the combined result of everything. Let's look at all the individual options over here. So this is the mute or solo button. So if I was to mute the drum sub, we've lost the drums. To solo the drums, I'm going to hold down command and click on that same button. And now the drum sub is soloed. Command click again to unsolo it. So unlike other DAWs where you have a separate mute and solo button, here it's combined into this one button. Next we have the panner. Pretty straightforward. Next over here we have the reverse polarity option. So essentially the polarity gets flipped. So whatever was a positive cycle becomes a negative and vice versa. Generally, you don't want to be using this option. There are very certain circumstances where you will need to reverse polarity. Next is the swap left and right channels. So let's say you have a stereo channel and for some reason you want to swap the left and right. You can just click here and now whatever was coming out of left is going to be coming out of the right and vice versa. All right, moving along, right below here, we have the stereo separation option. This is pretty cool. 
If I drag downwards, I'm now adding more stereo width to this particular track. And if I drag upwards, I'm reducing the stereo width and making it more mono. So let's have a listen to that in isolation. So let's start from default. Let's make it wider. Back to default. Now let's make it more mono. If you were listening to that on headphones, you would notice the stereo width increase and decrease. A very nice feature, and it's pretty amazing that it's built right into the mixer. And of course, you have a standard level control. Next, this option here is currently grayed out, but this essentially turns on or off all the effect slots on the selected channel. Now you notice these are all grayed out because I do not have any effects over here, but the master is enabled because on this default template, on the master track, specifically on slot 10, we have this fruity limiter plugin. All right, we'll explore all these plugins later on. So if I did want to bypass that, I can turn it off from here. Next is the arm disc recording option. So if I turn this on, I can now record audio to this particular mixer insert. All right, let's quickly check out the track inspector. This is the input for the particular track. That is if we plan to do any audio recording. Then we have the 10 slots for adding in effects. So clicking over here, we can load in any of these individual effects, either built-in or third party. We'll explore this a bit later on. At the bottom over here, we have an EQ, a pretty basic EQ built in to each channel. There's some controls over here. You can see that's a low shelf. That's a parametric mid and then a high shelf as well. Over here, we have the track latency option, which is the same that we have over here on individual tracks as well. Lastly, there's the output for the selected channel. So my master is right now going to the main line one, line two output on my audio interface. But these individual ones, they're not going anywhere because they are actually going to the master itself. But you can always choose to route this to a specific output if needed. All right, in the next tutorial, we'll dive deeper into some of the routing options we have in FL Studio's mixer.